So this is a case of a 49-year-old woman who was postmenopausal and had palpated a mass in her right breast. She had seen her uh, physician who had obtained a mammogram, which did demonstrate there was a three and a half centimeter mass. And this then prompted evaluation with biopsy, which confirmed that there was a high-grade invasive ductal carcinoma that was hormone receptor negative, so estrogen receptor negative, progesterone receptor negative, and was HER2 positive uh, and was three plus on immunohistochemical staining. Given that she had um, a HER2 positive breast cancer, the decision had been made for her to get preoperative therapy and she had received docetaxel in combination with carboplatin and um, trastuzumab and pertuzumab for a total of six cycles. After that, she had undergone breast surgery. She had elected to have a mastectomy and nodal evaluation, and she was found to have about a centimeter and a half of residual disease within the breast and no lymph node involvement. Um, and so the decision at that point had been made for her to receive adjuvant therapy with TDM1. And so she had been on TDM1 for about three cycles when she had started to develop some neuropathy and particularly within her hands. Um, and so there were further discussions that then had to be made about how to proceed with treatment. So generally, I've been treating patients who have HER2 positive tumors that are greater than two centimeters or are clinically node positive with preoperative treatment. When deciding what therapy to use, generally I am using a pertuzumab-based preoperative therapy since we know from a uh, at least in the adjuvant setting, that pertuzumab seems to have its greatest benefit in those patients who either have node positive disease or hormone receptor negative disease. And so since these are the patients who tend to benefit from pertuzumab, and since I'm using preoperative therapy in the higher risk patient population, I am using a pertuzumab-based therapy. So then the question becomes is which pertuzumab-based treatment to choose from? Now, we do have data from Neosphere that had looked at docetaxel in combination with trastuzumab and pertuzumab and had shown about a 40% pathologic complete response rate. And so I think that THP regimen is a reasonable choice. Alternatively, there is data from Trifena, uh, which had looked at giving the TCHP regimen, so docetaxel, carboplatin, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab, and demonstrated about a 60% pathologic complete response rate. And so generally, I'm choosing between TCHP or THP, although I will say it is not, you know, I think an alternative choice is to choose an anthracycline-based preoperative regimen. Um, so some people will use ACTHP um, as another treatment choice, but generally I am trying to pick a non-anthracycline-based treatment in the preoperative setting. So I think in this particular patient's case, TCHP was a very reasonable preoperative approach. So we know that preoperative pertuzumab-based therapy is highly effective. Um, so about 40% of patients achieve a pathologic complete response with THP, and about 60% of patients achieve a pathologic complete response with TCHP. We do, however, know that patients who have hormone receptor negative HER2 positive disease will achieve higher rates of pathologic complete response than those patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 positive tumors. So for example, in Neosphere, we saw a 26% pathologic complete response rate for hormone receptor positive HER2 positive tumors compared to about a 63% pathologic complete response rate in hormone receptor negative HER2 positive tumors. So having residual disease is more common in those patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 positive tumors. There is data to suggest that patients who have residual disease do have worse prognosis than patients who achieve pathologic complete response. So there was a very nice um, meta-analysis that had been done and published by uh, Patricia Cortazar that had very cleanly demonstrated that particularly within the HER2-positive patients, achieving a PATH-CR was associated with better disease-free survival than those patients who failed to achieve a PATH-CR. We also have data from Neosphere that showed that patients who achieve a pathologic complete response were disease-free um, at five years in 86% of patients compared to about 75% of patients who had residual disease. And this was also consistent with data from NeoAlto, so showing very similar rates, again suggesting that patients who fail to achieve a PATH-CR do have 
worse prognosis. And so I, I do think that this piece of information is critical in better understanding how a patient's long-term disease outcomes are gonna be.